Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I am back with another 10 interesting, unique, or unknown money making methods in old school runescape like always these methods will work sometimes and not others it's really going to depend on how many people are doing it if some of these methods aren't working for you i would suggest looking at some of my older money making guides which i will leave a link in the description for these methods aren't ideal but they are interesting they generally have pretty low requirements and are pretty fun to do in short bursts and that's personally how i like to make money in runescape just switching between a bunch of different methods keep it interesting it keeps it from getting dull and i just enjoy it more anyway guys i hope you enjoy the video and let's get started Okay, first up here is actually cutting achy trees. Now this can be done at level one wood cutting. So an extremely low requirement and no requirement really. All you need to do is grab the best axe that you can use and come to the felled up hills, which is just slightly south of Castle Wars. Let's go ahead and cut one of these trees down quickly. Okay, so we instantly cut it down and we got an achy tree log. Uh, there's another one over here. Boom, cut down. They cut down very quickly. Honestly, this would be a decent way to train up at early levels because currently they are price checking on the ground exchange for 500 each, which is more than you logs. Look at that. So in the price checker, they're only price checking at 245, but over on GE Tracker, we can see that they are worth around 500 each. So they don't sell very quickly on the ground exchange, so you won't be able to do this for a long period of time. I would collect maybe 100 uh, at the time and then go ahead and sell them off. As with a lot of these methods, I won't really be giving a GP per hour because it really varies on how many people are buying these items at a time. But currently each inventory is worth around 10k and you can see how quickly I'm getting an inventory. And considering that this can be done at level 1, I would say this is actually a very good money maker. Coming in at number 2 is buying items from the Shrimp and Parrot restaurant in Bermhaven. The Shrimp and Parrot is located pretty much just uh, west of the agility entrance. And all you will need for this method is some cash in inventory space. So what we're going to do is head to the restaurant and we're going to trade Alfonso the waiter for Alfonzi. And he'll actually sell a different selection of fish. Now what we're mostly looking for here is the cooked carambon, which sells for around 600 or 700 on the Grand Exchange. And he sells them for 325. So by buying out all three of them, that is a 1k profit. You could also consider buying the swordfish as well. And from there, you're just going to hop to another world. Now the best bet on how to teleport here would be to just uh, move your house portal to Brimhaven for while you're doing this method. That way you can teleport back to Castle Wars with a ring of dueling and then home teleport back to Brimhaven for the quickest banking. This method will be better or worse depending on the price of current runs mostly. If the value of current runs are high, like sometimes they're worth 1k each, this method is actually pretty good because you'll be getting around 2.1k per world top. Uh, plus the swordfish if you want to get those as well. But regardless, it makes for a really easy way to make uh, money in the early game. Alright, coming up next is crafting burning amulets. Normally I'd recommend trying to get the topaz amulet U or just the topaz amulet. However, they don't trade very much. So going through the entire process is usually your best bet. Burning amulets are very expensive. They're worth around 4.2k each. And the topazes are only worth around... 3.2k or at least that's what I bought them for. So there is a 1k margin on creating the burning amulets. All you have to do is bring some silver bars and red topaz over to a furnace. We're going to go ahead and craft the topaz amulets U. Not to mention we'll begin some nice crafting experience as well. Okay so we've done our full inventory we're just going to run back and now we just need to string them quickly. Withdraw some balls of wool. Attach the string to the amulets and from here we just need to enchant them. So it's a three-step process and it is a little time consuming and not really AFK in any way. If you do have access to Lunars, this will be a lot quicker because you do have access to the String Jewelry spell. So this inventory will net me probably around 10k in profit. We have 13 Burning Amulets, but there is the cost of the Cosmic Rune as well as the Silver Bar, which is a 200 GP off the profit. But good considering you don't really need a high crafting level or magic level to do this. You need 45 crafting to make the Amulet and 49 to enchant it, so really not that bad. Alright, next up here, we're going to be catching razor-backed kebits. Now, to get here, you want to come to the Piscalarius Hunter area. Uh, if you have access to Fairy Ring, you can go to the Fairy Ring AKQ. You'll also need a Hunter level up 49 as well as a Noose Wand. What we are looking for here is the Long Kebit Spike, which we can turn into the Long Kebit Bolt, uh, which per drop is worth almost 4k each, so pretty valuable. So you want to come up here to the Burrow inspect it and you'll see a trail coming off of it. From there you want to follow the trail and look for any plants or bushes in the area. So we're going to go ahead and search all of the plants around here. And once we search all of them there will be a new trail that pops up. Again you generally want to inspect the plants. Okay we got another trail leading down here. Let's go ahead and search this bush here. Uh, nothing in the bush so we'll go ahead and search the plant. Alright so we got another trail over here. Let's search this bush. And it looks like there might be something in the bush. So we'll right click and attack it. And there we go. We got a long kebit spike. Uh, we can drop the beast meat and the bones because they're not very valuable. 
and every time I get one, you just use a chisel on it, and it'll get you a stackable Kebit bolt. A very slow way to train your hunter, but you're also getting a decent amount of money per hour doing this. Nice and AFK, you never have to go bank anything, and it's actually kind of engaging and fun. I personally enjoy it. We already got three in a very short period of time, and three of them is worth actually almost 12k. So a pretty viable method. Alright, coming up next here is creating gloves of silence out of the dark Kebit fur. Now, I would highly recommend buying this directly from the Grand Exchange. If you go and collect it, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. So I went ahead and bought some off the Grand Exchange for around 550 GP each. You will need two of them plus 600 GP to make a Glove of Silence. And currently each one is worth 3k on the Grand Exchange. They're actually pretty valuable. You will be getting over a 1k margin. So in Southeast Barak, there is the fancy dress shop, and we want to go over the fur clothing. And once we open up the interface, we're going to go ahead and buy the Gloves of Silence. We can go ahead and buy 10 of them at a time. We'll make sure we do all of our inventory. And just like that, we've created quite a few Gloves of Silence, and we've made a profit of 1.2k on each one of these if we go off the GE price, which means we just made around 15 or 16k. And if we look on GE Tracker, we can see that even before this, they were worth 4.5k each. The one problem is buying the Dark Cabot Fur. I was able to insta-buy 50 of them, but uh, generally you may be waiting for a little while. Per day, only like 0 to 1,000 are traded. So that is the main issue with this method, or else it would be quite a bit of money per hour. Alright, coming up next here is creating tuna potatoes. Now, again, a pretty slow method because the two ingredients aren't traded a lot. However, they are traded enough. People do create these items on their own as their own self-contained money-making method, but I find creating the tuna potatoes to be better. We price checked the potatoes with butter at 220 and the tuna and corn at 305. The margin there kind of tells you that it's just not traded that much. Like we can see the uh, tuna and corn trades maybe like a couple hundred a day. Uh, if it's not available, you might have to make it yourself, but I would recommend just waiting. It's an extremely basic method, just withdraw 14 uh, potatoes with butter and 14 tuna and corn. And on each tuna potato, I think I'm making around 500 GP on. We'll see how much we can sell this inventory of tuna potatoes for. Alright, what did we sell them off for? Uh, 1,072, and the ingredients cost us around 530. So we're getting over double profit margins from that. So 600 GP on each one, so for the 100 I bought, I'll make 60k, a really easy money making method. You will need level 68 cooking though. Okay, a really easy, basic money making method is creating coconut milk. So we're going to go ahead and just buy a few coconuts on the ground exchange to show you. So all you need to do is use a hammer on the coconut to get coconut milk, which currently is selling for 2k each, and the coconuts are worth uh, but 1.5. 5k each so that's a 500 gp profit per coconut that we crack so you will need an inventory of empty vials and you just use the hammer on the coconut and you will slowly create half coconuts uh, from there you need to use that on an empty vial and you'll get a vial full of coconut milk so once the inventory is done we'll go ahead and use the half coconut on the vial and it'll start filling it up with coconut milk again each one of these is worth a 500 gp profit uh, coconut milk is used to create the antidote plus and plus plus potions. So it actually is needed fairly frequently for anyone making those. So we just made 7k profit pretty much on that inventory. And it's a really simple money making method. I don't think there's any requirements for it. And last tip here, if you have started Recipes for Disaster, buying from the Kaldiomancer's chest is a really easy and convenient way to make money. This chest here is both a bank and a shop, so it's extremely convenient. We're going to go over here to the buy food section. Now this can change a lot, but generally stuff like grapes are going to be a really good buy. They're worth 1 GP each at the chest and they sell for 125 on the Grand Exchange. That's 1.2k just right there. Stuff like the pizza base is worth 125 on the Grand Exchange. If you happen to notice any of these vegetables or cooking ingredients happen to be expensive on the Grand Exchange, just go ahead and buy them. There's pretty much no way to lose because, well, they're 1 GP each. Like checking right now, the cooking apple actually sells for around almost 200 GP each. So that's actually better and there's 50 of them. Let's go ahead and buy 27 of the cooking apples. Uh, so it'll only be 27 GP, and if we price check it, uh, it's worth 5k, which means we just profited 5k easily, and we can bank it literally right here. So it's actually a really good method. There's a ton of different items here that can be profitable. Generally, when grapes are worth more, people buy out the grapes. In the past, they've been worth 200, 300 GP each, in which case I would recommend that instead. However, currently, I would definitely go for the cooking apple. It seems to be the most valuable. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much it for the video. Those are eight uh, money-making methods that are kind of unique or unknown that I found over the last couple months. Like I said in the beginning, these methods will not always work. However, there are literally thousands of ways to make money in RuneScape. So I would recommend trying some of the older ones if this one doesn't work right off the bat. If you have any suggestions for money-making methods I could use in a future video and you don't mind them getting revealed, definitely leave a comment down below. I would be happy to feature them in my weekly video where I ruin money-making methods and make people cry. Anyway guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like. I always appreciate it. 
and I will see you next time.